wasteland. Welcome to episode three, painting the police truck. And before we start, I just want to say special thanks to the 37 subscribers. Yes, we've gone up from, what was it, 16, 17 we were on before? So thank you, you mad people, for continuing to support me and this terrible endeavour. And special thanks to Ricardo Leon for asking the question a few days ago. Repaints! I see so many gorgeous models here, but I see so few how-to videos and such. If you had just waited three days, you'd have a painting video. But I would like to shout out to... God, look at that name. Jan William van der Langenheim who says, don't overthink it, just use a brush, a basic colour scheme, then apply basic dry brushes, browns, and wash techniques to weather. Look at pictures of rusted cars to see where the rust starts and how it develops. And if it fails or you don't like it, do it again. It's only a cheap toy car. So, so hell, I don't even need to make this video. But for those of you who are interested, keep watching. Okay, so in our last video, you saw me assemble the sheriff truck. And in this video, we're going to be looking at painting it, as it says on the tin. This is going to be a nice, simple paint job. It's not going to be too over the top. Uh, to that end, for the most part, we're going to be using Citadel paints. Um, I won't be referring to them by their names because their names changed over the years. So um, Chaos Black became Abaddon Black and all that kind of stuff. So. In order to keep things simple, I'll just be saying, right, I base coated the truck in brown, a nice flat brown color. Washes wise, we will be using da -da -da -da, Norn Oil, also known as Liquid Talent. Uh, we will also be using from Game Color, a little bit of, uh, was it Smoky Ink, which would be quite nice. Now painting itself can be as easy or as hard as you want it to be. For the base layers, they don't need to be particularly neat. So we're just putting this straight on. We're not worrying too much about keeping it neat or within the lines because we're just picking out the areas that at this point we want in that lovely matte black color. So as you're painting your truck or your car, do just take time to think about what areas you do want in what colours. So in this case, I'm currently deciding whether I want this window shield at the front, if I want that to be black, like the rest of the body, or if I want to, say, have that in a silver or a grey to really stand out from the rest of the build. Okay, so going into the next layer, or the next area of base coating, we're going to be using some of this silver paint, this sort of dull silver and we're going to be painting areas like the bumper and the blower. The exhaust, we're going to use quite a, a bright silver paint. Now what I like to do as well is if I know I've got some rather fine details on a vehicle, I like to leave off doing those until after I've done all the the base layers and the dry brushing. So in this case, I know I've got this, this rear browning machine gunner. So rather than try and paint him now and do all those fine details now and run the risk of, of then covering over those details when I do quite a quite a messy, quite a, a relaxed dry brush over the rest of the vehicle, I will do those later. I will say as well, when you're painting during these early stages, don't worry too much about missing areas or not covering literally every square inch of the model. Now, classic American police cars, they've got this sort of almost solid white body going on where it's only really the front and the rear of the vehicle that are kept in black. Now, I know underneath the masking tape that the doors are brown, so that's going to be an interesting challenge. But what I am going to do is paint the roof of this truck white. Yeah, we'll, we'll paint over these side panels as well, like this improvised armour. Because at the end of the day, I think, if they've given the vehicle a certain look, they'd want to try and keep it. White can be a devil to paint, because at the end of the day, white naturally will allow colours underneath it to bleed through. Same as yellow. Man, yellow and white are two difficult colours to paint. 
And I think that's the thing with white. It's such a strong colour. You don't need to worry too much about making it jump out. It'll it'll do that all by itself. Like already, that's that's pretty stark contrast between the darker black and grey and brown areas. I will say I am sorry about the lighting issues of these videos. Um, I'm gradually trying to improve it. At the moment, I'm just having more fun making them than I am sort of polishing them and making them perfect so <laughs> that is something I hope will uh, gradually improve over time. So that's that's the base colors blocked in you know we've got the silver we've got the black we've got the white. What I'm gonna do I'm gonna jump cut after touching up some areas that need working on and then we'll start with the the next step. And what I'm going to do is something I've started doing recently which is I'm going to paint the outside of the tire black and then when it comes around to dry brushing in sort of a nice sandy beige colour, you'll get this lovely little ring of black around the the hubcaps of each tyre, which I think makes it look just a little bit nicer. I've had previous cars, like some of my very first cars, I would just do these solid sand wheels and they looked alright, but it's only when you're sort of doing later builds and paint jobs that you go hang about. I could be doing something a little bit nicer here. So I'm using quite a quite an old battered paintbrush. Um, the bristles have mostly started splitting away from each other as you can see. But it still does the job. You know, it just requires a bit of turning as you as you're getting the, the paint off the palette. And if the wheels haven't been glued in place you can just nicely turn them. Right, so it's on to the dry brushing now which means we need our nice sandy coloured paint. We want just enough on the brush. It will just start to highlight details on it. A lot of the surface scratches can really be seen when you dry brush over it. Now we're not going overboard. You know, We're not trying to turn these areas beige after all. But if you just compare that to the other side, you can see it is quite a stark contrast. So let's, let's do that again. And yes, when we take the tape off the mast area where the decal is, we will want to do a bit of dry brushing there. Wheels can be a bit tricky at first, but stick with it, it does get easier. I don't know if you can see that too clearly, but it's just starting to pick out, so right around the rim there. Okay, so up till now we've been doing the base coat, we've done a bit of dry brushing. I get the feeling we're about ready to start having a look at the older passenger back here. Okay, so deciding on how to paint our little ultra survivalist police cop of the Armageddon. Yeah, it's a tough one because you can basically paint them however you like. I mean, you have to take into account what the actual model is wearing. I mean, this one's clearly wearing a helmet and some body armor, um, but we could paint him as wearing jeans, as an example. As you can see from the state of the guy's face, only the very first base coat of skin coloured paint has been applied. So he's got a bit of a, a zombie look going on at the moment. If you just can just barely make out the hands, you can see again it's the same issue where in some cases the paint's actually gone over onto the gun itself and that will need touching up. So the next step after this will be to apply a wash to the drop to the, the passenger as well as to all these metal areas that you see on the truck as well. And you can even use a wash to pick out some of the, the scratches and the detail marks. What I'm going to do now with the, the machine gunner on the back of the truck, I'm going to go over the colours I originally painted, so the blue for the jeans, the the red for the, the arms and the skin tones. I'm now going to go over those dark areas and paint them with a, a lighter layer, so a, a highlight. So just because we're getting into the final details on the driver, I thought I'd just quickly show you how I paint uh, lenses and, and goggles and things like that. It's a little bit of blue and the idea is you're gradually lightening the blue further and further until it's practically white. But each time you're just adding a little bit of it like that. 
and you can even get a bit more definition if you just do the side a little bit. So the most important step here now will be removing the masking tape and revealing the decal underneath. Now we have to be careful because we don't want to damage the car in any way shape or form. We've not gone to all this effort only to see it destroyed. Now there might be a tiny amount of glue residue from the tape but for the most part that shouldn't be an issue. So yeah it certainly changes the look of the the truck there's no doubt about that. Considering how clean they are we're going to need to dirty them up and the easiest way to do that is going to be with a, a light dry brushing of beige. This can be a bit messy as as we're going on to something that's a bit it's a bit clean and it's the same idea again what look like scratches and dents areas where it's been marked or maybe someone managed to, to fire a weapon at it and impacted it a bit to the, the bars on the front and there we go and I'd say that is pretty much it yeah, you can do some more highlighting on the, the front windscreen you could do the headlights on the front of the truck but for the most part that is our build complete That's a good trick. Hang on. Yes, viewers can now see that the cat has actually gotten behind the blind and is currently sandwiched between the blind and the window.